Sasa kona la mshugantambo, you know the tradition, man. Sigu ya lazi, minaka mpigo anu sigu. Ask the right questions, get the right answers, learn the proper way. Only kelezi nati knows how. Lana ngeli no sisi, whom I think, ngezi zulu, ika malake begzo wa osmanga, no musmanga liso. Dimakati, ugai? Kitangu kai. Kigona, please tell the people at home further about who you are. Ni mnyaka mga kala ploma, puma, kwenze nja. Okay, we do my cards. So, I like I'm a great 12 year old Lena in 18. I'm a little bit of a zone too. Pimville zone too. So, what is your learner question for the teacher in the studio today? My question is what differences are there between a parallel and a series circuit? Well, let's quickly repeat that question for our viewers at home. She asked, what differences are there between our series and our parallel circuits? Now, to start off to answer this, we need to go and take a look at what is a series circuit and what is a parallel circuit. Now, you've seen I've drawn a few circuits here for you on a slide. Note, though, that if we start off from our battery side, and you can take your finger and you follow along on this line, and there is no other option but to travel on this line back again to your battery, then it's going to be seen as a series circuit. Should you, though, have more than one option to travel through, this is the typical one here at the bottom, you'll note though, that now we've got at least two to three options of where this current can travel through, then it's going to be seen as a parallel circuit. So, series circuit, current has got only one path to travel through, but in a parallel circuit, it's going to have two or more options to travel through. Okay, now let's first start off by taking a look at a series circuit. Now, note though that I've been talking about a battery up till now. Now, a battery is usually something that consists of two or more cells. A cell is made up of both a positive and a negative. Now, note that your long line always indicates the positive and your short line the negative. So, in our specific example, we're going to have three cells and thus this is then seen as a battery. Now, you'll note that there's voltmeters, ammeters and resistors. We're going to discuss each of them now in detail, starting off with our current. Now, our current in a series circuit is something that's very unique for a series circuit. It's going to be the same everywhere in the circuit. So, whether you end up measuring the current, in this case before the resistors, in between the resistors or even after the resistors, the current stays the same everywhere. So, as we said, that's something unique for a series circuit. Now, our current gets measured by our ammeters and our ammeters are obviously our circles here with the capital letter A that indicates that it's an ammeter and this ammeter has got a very low resistance so that it would not use up any of the energy of the specific charge. Now let's go and take a look at your potential difference. Your potential difference though is going to be the sum of each one of the potential differences across the resistor. So in this situation we have a total potential difference across my battery. Now it will only be a total potential difference across the battery if there's no internal resistance involved. Now in our next lesson we'll be discussing our internal resistance but for this lesson let's just assume that our total potential difference is then the total across the battery. Good, and then we're going to have our voltmeter V1 plus V2 plus V3 getting back again to our total voltmeter reading. Now let's go over to our resistors. Note that our resistors, when they are connected in series, is going to be known as potential dividers because they split the potential difference up. So our resistors, though, should we go and add them up, we'll just say in total that R1 plus R2 plus R3 will get us our total resistance. Now note that if we go slightly back again to our potential difference, the voltmeter measures our potential difference. And these voltmeters though are always connected in parallel. Now the reason for that is the voltmeters has got a very, very high resistance and it prevents any current from running through them. So you will take note though that Actually, the current will start running through here, but it won't be traveling through this part of our circuit because of the high resistance of a voltmeter. So therefore, it will just continue running straight through our circuit, not going onto any of the branches that's connected to our voltmeters. Now, let's quickly go back again to our resistors. As we said, if we want to go and calculate the total resistance, then we'll just add them up in the circuit R1 plus R2 plus R3. Now let's go and take a look at your parallel circuits. Your parallel circuits, as we said, your current is going to have more than one branch to be traveling through. Once again, as the current starts, it will not be traveling through our voltmeters, as well as here at the bottom when it gets to this part, it's also not going to be traveling through our voltmeter. It will though be split up among these three branches. 
Now, the current dough on the other side is going to be added up again, as we're going to see now when we take a look at our current. So the current in total will get, in this case, split up among the branches, and the total current will be then found at the end, which we see here as A4. So if we, for example, started with 3 amp as our current, it's going to split among these branches, but at the end, we will still end up with 3 amp again. Now do take note that our resistors, when they are connected in parallel, as you can see, is now going to be my current dividers. Remember that in our series circuit, our resistors were our potential dividers, but now they're going to be dividing our current and is thus seen as the current dividers. Now let's take a look at our potential difference. Now like the current was something that's unique in the series circuit because it stays the same, now our potential difference is going to be the unique thing for a parallel circuit because the potential difference is going to be staying the same across each one of our resistors. Now do take note, you'll see that I've got V1 here across the first resistor, that would be equal to my V2, which would also be equal to V3, and would be equal to the total potential difference across this combination. Should there be no other resistors found in the series circuit, then it will also be equal to the total potential difference across the batteries. So as said, that's something unique for a parallel circuit, like the current was unique for the series circuit. Now let's go and take a look at your resistance. For your resistance, we're going to note that you have a specific formula which you're going to have to add up the resistors with. You are going to have R1, R2 and R3, but in adding them up it becomes a formula that says 1 over R parallel is equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3. Now let's just say for our own interest sake that we've got a resistor 1 ohm, 2 ohm and 3 ohm. So when we're going to add them up it will end up being 1 over 1 plus 1 over 2 plus 1 over 3 and this ends up giving us 11 over 6. Now this is not the final answer. Please remember that when you use this formula that you would still need to invert this back again to R parallel over 1. So you need to end up saying but we would rather want R parallel over 1 and that's going to be equal to 6 over 11 which then ends up giving us 0 0.55 ohms. We are on SABC One Zanzi for sure, Mondays to Fridays between the hours of 5 and 6 a.m. Uh -huh. She knows this. Still here at Mshugantambo with. Longeswa Chabalala. Longeswa Chabalala. No, Longeswa Chabalala. Longeswa Chabalala. Where are you from? You're very good to see. In Pumalang. In Pumalang, yeah. Kamsang. Kamsang. You got the ligas? Kamsang. Alright, what message do you have for young people, uh, Lapo Eka? Uh, suicide is not an answer. There's more to life than it meets the eye. So keep on going. Yeah, come on. You're going to go to the first time. I'm going to go to the first time. I'm going to go to the first Alright, so what is your learning question for our teacher in the studio today? My Lena question is that we've done um, Ohm's Law in Grade 9, but I don't remember what it is about. Good, let's just quickly go back again to that question. She asked, what is Ohm's Law about again? Okay, now we're going to go over Ohm's Law. As she said, she's done it already in Grade 9, so it is basically revision, but it's very important that you still remember what it's about. Okay, so first off, what is Ohm's Law? It states that the current is directly proportional to the potential difference if the temperature is kept constant. And it's very important that you do state the temperature must be kept constant, otherwise you won't get full marks for your definition. Okay, now let's go and look further onto it. it Note so that on your slide there you'll see there's a graph for your, in this case, ohmic conductor. Now we call any conductor that obeys Ohm's law, that means where the potential difference is directly proportional to the current, an ohmic conductor. Now you will note that it's a straight line through the origin of the graph and that indicates to us it's a directly proportional relationship. Now what we would like to know is what does the gradient of such a graph actually indicate to us? Now you've seen in some of the questions where they've actually answered this already, but let's see how did they actually get to their answer. So you know that gradient according to maths is delta y over delta x, and that means y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Now in this case on our y-axis we've got potential difference. On our x-axis we seem to find our current. So therefore we're going to have v over i as our gradient. Now we do know from our Ohm's formula that we've already done in grade 9 that V is equal to I times R. 
and from this should we have V over I, it actually indicates to us the resistance. So therefore the gradient of a potential difference versus current graph is then actually going to indicate to you the resistance. Note now that this is going to be a constant resistance because this line is in this case a straight line through the origin. And this will stay constant if the temperature was kept constant. Now we have also in the games mentioned a few of the factors that will affect the resistance. Songs, please tell us. Do you think a thicker wire will have a lower or a higher resistance? Yes. No, no. Think no. about it as a single lane or a double lane traffic. Uh, high resistance. No, it's going to have no. a low resistance. So our thicker wires like a double lane traffic, that means that more cars, thus in this case more current can travel through faster. So thicker wire, low resistance, thinner wire, high resistance. And now we're going to take a look at the length of the wire. Samkela, what do you think? Long wire, would it have a high or a low resistance? A high, a high resistance. Yes, that's true. A longer wire will end up having a high resistance. And then you've got your things like your type of wire. That means things like nichrome or copper wire instead. And lastly, the temperature of the wire, as you see many of the contestants in the game actually made use of as the temperature of the wire. Good. Now let's quickly just take a look at when do we see something as having a high resistance and a low resistance. Should you be having, in this case, two graphs. I'm just going to call them A and B. If something has a high resistance, then it will mean a steeper gradient in this case. So therefore, A will have a high resistance, B is going to have a lower resistance, and if it's got a lower resistance, it will be seen as a better conductor. <laughs>